Well, good morning, Square One, First Baptist Church, First Kids. Man, welcome to our children's worship service. I'm so glad that you've taken part of your day to join us today. Man, I hope summer is in full swing at your house. I know it is at ours. We're doing all kinds of crazy things. We've got a lot of things planned for this summer. VBS is coming up. It's going to look a little different with VBS, but we are still going to be able to do VBS this year. So put that on your calendar. It's going to be coming up quick. But right now, before we get started this morning, let's stand up and let's sing a song and let's worship the Lord this morning. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Oh. Uh. I can't. One, two, three. Hey, John. Oh! Oh! What's going on? Brandon, I, I can't get these things off my fingers. Oh, you, you have to have fingers in both ends. Oh, well, I don't have any more fingers. I know someone who does. <sighs> I don't think this is how it works. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Everyone's favorite show that takes you on a tour de force of laughs, <laughs> knowledge, and thought-provoking questions yes. about life and God. Yes, siree. But before we get to any of that, I have got to get something to eat. I am famished. Did you not eat before the show? No. Why not? Well, I, I couldn't decide what I was hungry for. You got any ideas? 
Uh, I don't know, sushi rolls? No, 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 never say that. Oh, why? Why is it, is it a raw a sushi fish? Roll? No, that's not the raw fish. It's just, what is it wrapped in? Oh, it's, I think it's like a seaweed. No, 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 I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay, fine. You, uh, I think so, there's some egg salad back there in the fridge. What is salad? What is salad about egg salad? You ask for a salad and they come back with a giant bowl of egg mush. What's even in it? Well, it's all things that you like. There's egg. No! There's mayo. No! What? No! No, no, no. I don't want to know. Next. All right, fine. Uh, you want some cotton candy? <gasps> Why, Brandon? Why? It's not actual cotton. You wouldn't eat your shirt, right? You wouldn't eat your shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's so delicious, so good. I love cotton, tastes like candy, said no one ever. Okay, yeah, but real cotton candy is delicious. I refuse to eat anything I don't understand. Okay, yeah, but every time I try to explain something to you, you say, I don't wanna know. I don't sound like that. Yeah, look, how do you expect to understand if you won't listen to the answers to your questions? Fine, fine. You can try to teach me about cotton candy, <laughs> but I'm not making any promises. Fair enough. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hey, welcome to the show. Come on in, have yeah. a seat. Whoa, sorry. Here you go. Thanks for having me, John. You are welcome. This is, hey, hey, how did you know my name was John? I've watched the show before. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I really liked y'all's old stuff. Yeah, me too. So, uh, who are you and what do you know? Oh, my name is Sugar tilt -a whirl and I sell cotton candy with the Thomason Traveling Carnival. Oh, wow, so you're like a cotton candy expert. Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and your actual name is, is Sugar? Who would make something like that up? I, uh, I... Can you tell us how cotton candy is made? I sure can. All right. How is cotton candy made? With a cotton candy maker. Fascinating. And uh, if you had a I've got one outside. Want me to bring it in? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Do you? Uh, he means yes. Well, then why didn't he just say yes? Uh, oh, he was just, I, I, I don't know. Okay. Hey, you with the hat, can you give me a hand? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure I can, and my name is John. I know, I watched the show, remember? Right, yeah. You wearing a hat? Yeah? Can you give me a hand? Sure. Several minutes later. All right, so how does this work? I don't know. You don't. No, but I thought you, I thought you sold cotton candy at the Thomason Traveling Carnival. How does that work? What, my microphone? Yeah. I have no idea how it works, actually. I know you're not supposed to do that. Hey, uh, how do you make the cotton candy? Oh, well, you pour the candy sugar into the head of the machine. It's basically just granulated sugar with food flavoring and coloring. This here is silly nilly. The machine heats it up to its melting point, which is about 190 degrees centigrade or 395 degrees Fahrenheit. This here is spinning at 500 RPMs. And with that level of centrifugal force, the liquefied sugar is expelled through small holes and it creates a fibrous material. And then you just roll it onto a paper cone.
<laughs> so that's how it works. I have no idea how it works. I thought we talked about that. Stop. Okay. Oh, well, that, that, that looks really good. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Did you, did you bring any? Any for you? No, I only brought one paper cone. Oh. But you can candy just about anything. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm. That is good. Mm. Yeah, thanks, sugar. Yeah. Are you talking to me or the cotton candy? You. You're welcome. Mm. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. We'll see you later, sugar. I mean, probably not. We're gonna be in Skokie this time tomorrow. It's a traveling carnival, not a stay in one place carnival. Those are basically just really sad amusement parks. Well, safe travels. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay. Do we have a key? Tastes way better than the shirt. Ah, it's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey, Kellen! How's it going, fellas? Oh, just having a little tasty treat. Nice. You got a story for us today? I do, um, but I can only find one so-and-so show player to help me tell it. Do you guys want to give me a hand? Yes, we do! Great. Today we're going to be using an oldie but a goodie, a flannel graph. This is how I learned Bible stories when I was a kid. Of course, our flannel graph, it's a little different. So, this guy right here is Philip. Philip was one of the earlier followers of Jesus. He sometimes called Philip the evangelist because he traveled all over telling people the good news of Jesus. So Philip was walking around one day when an angel spoke to him. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. <laughs> Philip, huh, whoa, oh, what's up angel? Go south to the desert road. Which one? Oh, you know the one that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Oh, that one. Thanks, Angel. No problem. Bye. And I'm walking, and I'm walking. So Philip went where the angel commanded. And on the way, he met an official who worked for the queen of Ethiopia, traveling back from Jerusalem. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. Then Philip heard the Holy Spirit speaking to him. Huh. What's that? You want me to walk over to that chariot? Okay. And I'm walking to the, I'm here. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off, he did not open his mouth. What does that mean? Hello! Do you understand what you're reading? How can I? It's talking about sheep and wool. I need someone to explain it to me. Can you? I think I can help you. All right. Well, come over here and sit beside me on my chariot. Beside you? Okay. A great uh, leap! Don't forget your glasses. Uh, right, watch my horse. Whoa, there horsies! Uh, uh, no reason, I'm just gonna squat down a little. All right. To, I'm almost there! Yeah. I'm almost great. there! I can. There you go. Just push you around. There you go. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, great job. Uh, uh, easy peasy. The Ethiopian official was reading from what we call the book of Isaiah. Many years before, God had shown Isaiah a vision of the future 
and he had written it down for all of God's people to read. Some of what he wrote was kind of hard to understand. That's why the official asked for help. Well, here we are on the back of this chariot. It's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Get up, Bessie. <laughs> Will, do you have any questions for me? Is Isaiah the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Is he the sheep led to be killed? Well, actually, Isaiah is talking about someone else who will come much later. Someone who will die as a sacrifice for all of our sins. Tell me, have you heard of the man Jesus? No. Oh, well, let me tell you all about him. Philip told the Ethiopian the good news, that God had planned for hundreds of years to send Jesus to pay for the sins of the world and that anyone who believes in him can be saved. So when they came to a body of water, Whoa, look, here's some water. What can stop me from being baptized? Nothing, let's go to the water. <laughs> Horses away! So Philip baptized the man right then and there. All right, are you ready for this? Yes, let's do it. Okay, here we go. <gasps> and after they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. Whoa! Where is the spirit taking me? Whoa! Whoa! Impressive. <laughs> Backstruck. Backstruck. The end. Guys, thanks for your help. That was fun. Yes, it was. You know what? I loved how the official wasn't afraid to ask when he didn't understand something. I know. We shouldn't let things we don't understand keep us from doing what needs to be done. So it's good to ask questions. Yeah, and it's good to make yourself available to answer questions others might have, like, like Philip did. Truth. Great story, Kellen. Thanks for letting us play. Later. Later. You know, I have questions sometimes about life and about God. Me too. And I don't know that all of those questions will be answered, but I think it's important to ask. I have a question right now. Oh, well then reveal the question. All right, what questions do you have? I have so many. Like, what's the difference between indigo and midnight blue? Why do they call it a litter of kittens and kitty litter and they're two completely different things? Uh, maybe you have some questions. Why is abbreviation such a long questions word? Questions about life or, or God or really anything. What weighs more, the Chrysler Building or the Great Pyramid of Cheops? Talk about it together. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? We'll see you next time on... And what is a woodchuck? The so-and-so show. And why does it get bothered that it has a nickname? Doesn't it want to be called Charles? What are you going to candy first, John? First thing is a shoe. Wait, is that mine? Yes. Scissors. work very well, it just didn't cut it. Order up! John's Keytar! What? No, 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 no! Oh, no! Man, what an awesome story about Philip and how he engaged with that Ethiopian eunuch on the road, and he was able to explain the scriptures to him. You see, Philip, he was a disciple, but he had also studied the scriptures to be able to um, interpret what the, Phil the Ethiopian eunuch was reading. So I want to do something a little fun today. We don't have an experiment or anything, but what we do have is a Bible quiz. Do you know the Bible? Let's take this quiz. All right, so we're going to start off pretty easy. There's some in there that may be a little hard, maybe a little complicated, but let's see how well you do, okay? It's a competition in your house, all right? Between your kids, between mom and dad, you guys keep score at home. We're gonna see who knows the most about the Bible. All right, question number one, here we go. What is the first book of the Bible? Is it A, Job, B, Revelation, C, Matthew, or D, Genesis? We're starting off pretty easy here. Take a moment to tabulate your answers. Let's see what the answer is. The answer is D, Genesis, 
First book of the Bible right there, Genesis, was the very first book of the Bible. Well, they believe Job may be the oldest, but Genesis is the first book of our Bible tells us about creation. All right, next question. How long did Methuselah live? I like that, that name, Methuselah. Methuselah. It's a, it's a cool name. I might have a dog one day named Methuselah. Anyway, how long did Methuselah live? Three months, 99 years, 969 years, or 37 years of age? How long did he live? Take a moment. Tabulate your answers. Let's see here. If you said C, 969 years, you are correct. Congratulations. If you answered any of the other ones, you are wrong. So, Hope you're keeping score at home. Let's keep on moving here. What was the profession of Joseph, Jesus's earthly father? What did Joseph, Jesus's earthly father, do? Was he a carpenter? Did he work in the temple as a temple priest? Was he a farmer or was he a cheesemaker? Lots of famous cheesemakers back in the day. It's kind of a, a, an interesting answer there. All right, let's see. Final answer. Everybody got their final answer locked? All right, final answer. A, he was a carpenter. Pat yourself on the back if you got that one right. Not too difficult, but some people may not know that Joseph was a carpenter. All right, moving right along. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, what did he discover the Israelites worshiping? So Moses goes up, he gets the Ten Commandments. They're in the wilderness, headed towards the Promised Land. God gives him the Ten Commandments, his law, his rules for the people to follow. He comes down and the people have gone crazy and they begin to worship something. What are they worshiping? Is it A, a statue of, of Baal, a golden calf, the sun, or D, himself? Were they worshiping Moses? All right. Tabulate your answers. Here we go. Everybody got it? The answer is a golden calf. Yes, if you got that right, good job. A golden calf is the answer. All right. We only have, uh, there's probably three or four more of these left, so... Which one of these is not a book of the Bible? Man, if you know all your Bibles, if you've been to Awana and you know the Awana song, you might be able to get this one right. Which of these is not a book of the Bible? Is it A, 1 Corinthians, B, Job, C, Exodus, or D, Elijah? Which one of these is not a book of the Bible? All right, here we go. Everybody got their final answers locked in? Oh, here we go. Make, make your choices. And the answer is, D, Elijah, if you said D, Elijah was not one of the books of the Bible, you would be correct. Elijah was a prophet. You can look at 1 Kings, I believe chapter 8, for that and study more about Elijah's life. He doesn't have a book written after him, but he was one of God's prophets. All right, what is the longest book in the Bible? The longest book. Which one do you think would take the longest for you to read? Is it A, Genesis, B, Revelation, C, Psalms, or D, John? Which one of those books do you think is the longest in the Bible? I'll give you a few seconds. All right, time's up. Here we go. Final answers. The answer is C, Psalms. Psalms is the longest book in the Bible. And it's kind of like right in the middle of the Bible too. If you, if you look at that, it's kind of interesting. You look at that later. Ask your parents. What is the longest book in the Bible? It is Psalms. Answer C. All right. This one's kind of tricky. This is a tricky one right here. How many people were saved on the ark? Now you got to think about this one for a minute. How many people were saved on the ark? Was it two? Was it a hundred? Was it 10? Or was it eight? How many people do you think was saved when Noah built the ark? All right. Think about it. Make your final choices. Here we go. Answer is D. It was eight. He had three sons and each of his sons had a wife. And so you had Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. That adds up to eight. So there you go, eight. And then they repopulated the earth from there. All right, what type of insect did John the Baptist eat in the desert? What type of insect did he eat in the desert? Was it a locust? Was it a ladybug or ladybugs? Did he eat ants? I had a friend that used to eat ants. It was the strangest thing in the world. But he said they're full of protein. I don't know. Uh, ants or D, beetles? Which one of those do you think John the Baptist was eating in the desert? Give you just a moment. Think about it. Talk amongst yourselves. Phone a friend. Ask a parent. One of the two. And the answer is 
a locust. He ate locust. Can you imagine anybody eating locust? Uh, I had a, I was doing a video shoot one time and, and we were doing this silly thing and they had chocolate covered crickets and they were trying to get me to eat a chocolate covered cr- cricket. I wouldn't do it. There's no way. I, I think I would have to be starving or something, but chocolate covered locust or honey co- covered locust, maybe John, that's what he was, he was eating, you know, uh, plentiful in that day. All right. In what city was Jesus born? What city do you remember from all of our Bible stories that we've talked about? What city was Jesus born in? Is it A, Jerusalem, B, Bethel, C, Bethlehem, or D, Capernaum? Which one of those places was Jesus born? Now, I can tell you right now, Jesus went to every single one of those places. But which one was he born in? All right. Lock in your answers. Here we go. Answers are C, Bethlehem. If you said Bethlehem, you are correct. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and he lived a lot of his life in Capernaum when his ministry was happening, and he was having his disciples go all over Jerusalem proclaiming the gospel. All right, here we go. Now, this question has to do with our story today with Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch is reading out of the book of Isaiah And he's asking Philip basically this question, a little bit more scripture to it, but basically this question, who is this sheep led to the slaughter that the Ethiopian eunuch asked Philip about? Who is this sheep in scripture in Isaiah that is being led to the slaughter? And so Philip hops up there and he says, hey, do you know about this guy? And so which one of these people was he talking about? Was it A, Jesus, B, Saul, C, little Bo Peep, not sure how that got in there, or D, Paul? Which one of those do you think was the Ethiopian eunuch asking Philip about. Well, Philip, he says to the Ethiopian eunuch, have you ever heard of Jesus? And so the answer is Jesus, right? Always, great answer, Sunday school answer, right? But here's the thing, Philip is able to say, hey, listen, those scriptures you're reading, they've been fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the sheep that was led to the slaughter. He is the sacrificial lamb. He is the one who washes away our sins and makes propitiation. He makes a way. He pays the price for what we have done. Jesus is the lamb of God. And so that's what today's about. Man, why did we take this crazy quiz? Well, right here. This is why we took this crazy quiz. 2 Timothy 2.15. This is like the Awana verse, right? Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who is no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. See, Philip, he knew God's word. He was able to rightly handle God's word. And in that moment, God used him in an amazing way to evangelize the Ethiopian eunuch. And he became a believer. He was baptized a little while later. And then boom, Philip just took off. He was like gone. It was the craziest thing ever. But here's the thing, man. We need to be in God's word. We need to know God's word. We need to take a Bible quiz every day about God's word so that when we run into people like the Ethiopian eunuch and he says, hey, I'm reading this scripture. I don't understand or I don't understand what life's all about or I don't understand how anyone could ever be forgiven of sins. You can say, you know what? Do you know who Jesus is? Man, he is the sacrificial lamb. He's the one who died on the cross and made a way for you and me to be forgiven by his sacrifice. And so we need to be able to rightly handle the word of truth. So I hope, man, this summer you're going to stay in God's word you're going to be memorizing scripture. You're going to be seeking to have this biblical knowledge and be prepared so that when people ask you about the hope that's in you, you will be able to answer just like Philip did with that Ethiopian eunuch. All right, I think it's time to stand back up. We're going to sing another song and we'll be right back with our giveaways. Here we go. Thank you, God, for saving me. Saving me. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. You set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Everything I have.
Man, I love that song. It's so much fun. Hey, I hope you've had a great time today. I hope you did well on the Bible quiz. Man, I hope that this week is just an awesome week for you. Read your Bible each and every day this week, okay? Let's make that promise to one another. We're going to read God's Word this week so that we can gain the knowledge we need to be able to share with others. All right, let's do our giveaway real quick. We'll start with the girls over here. We'll see who our girls winner is this week. Mix it up, mix it up. All right. And Isaacs. Oh, Lainey Isaacs. These are written backwards. That's why I always get confused. Lainey Isaacs, you are our winner today. I will be by your house later today. All right, let's see who our boy winner is. I'm excited. All righty, here we go. Eli Rogers. Eli, you are the winner. Winner, winner. Here we go. Um, Eli, I'll be by your house later today, and I'll be bringing some stuff. You'll be able to pick whatever you want. Man, I'm so glad you guys again joined us today. I hope you have a great week, and we will see you right back here next week. Have a great week, everybody.